All right, we're gonna look at the company Jinko Solar. Um, whenever you're gonna evaluate any company, go to their website. They should have a tab at the top, investor relations or events, financials. Look for these drop downs and look for presentations. This should be the first thing you do with any company you want to analyze. Click on the most recent quarter presentation. It should be a PowerPoint presentation and you can read through everything if you'd like, but disclaimers, those are generally going to be the same thing. It'll let you know that they're estimations, they're not exact, they're fluid, they'll, they will fluctuate. And then they'll usually give you a summary. You don't have to go read through every page if you don't want to. A lot of times they'll include a lot of extra images, graphs. Here at Jinko Solar, their Q4 2020 financial highlights. Their quarterly shipments were up 27.2% year over year. Good thing to recognize. Whenever a company focuses on the year over year instead of the quarter over quarter, it's a good indication that they were down quarter over quarter. In this case, that is true. So if one metric fails, resort to the year over year. If the year over year is negative but the quarter is positive, report the quarter. So whatever is more preferable, they're gonna they're gonna throw out there. That's to be expected. Uh, the total revenues were down 1.1% year over year. That was even more so quarter over quarter, I believe, but we'll get into that. Gross profit was down 12.9% year over year. Now that should indicate that either their costs were greater or the price per unit went down. And in their case, solar is becoming cheaper, so they can't sell their product for as much. If they can't keep up with production at the same rate that the costs are dropping, then you can see where that would be an issue. And also shipping costs are affecting the industry. So module price continues to fall and demand continues to increase as solar becomes the cheapest source of energy, cheaper than coal, oil, wind, nuclear. And this is only expected to increase over the years. Uh, there's a prediction that solar panels would be 60% of what they currently cost by 2030. They had a gross margin of 16% compared with 17% in Q3 and 18.2% year ago. And quarterly EBITDA is down 43% year over year. And EBITDA means... And EBITDA stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Uh, the earnings being the net income, interest being interest on money borrowed to fund business activities. Taxes could be uh, taxes that the company paid or revenues received from the government subsidies. Depreciation and amortization depend on historical investments the company has made and not on the current operating performance of the business. So the company will buy buildings, vehicles, machinery, and that equipment starts to degrade and it is worth less money in the future. The depreciation amortization will usually be lumped into the cash flow statement on the cash from operating activities section. So the EBITDA is used if you want to see how the company is doing before these various things affect the balance sheet. Income from operations down 88% year over year. Non-GAAP net income. All right, so GAAP is a standard of reporting that the U.S. uses. And in order to be listed on the U.S. Stock Exchange, you got to abide by GAAP rules. So the non-GAAP is always going to be better than the GAAP just because there's other accounting that you can use or there's certain, certain things that you could sidestep. But the GAAP usually is more scrutinized. That was down 92.3%. Net loss of 57.8 million due to change in fair value of convertible senior notes. This is a little complicated, so I'm going to link a video to investopedia.com instead. A convertible bond is a bond the investor can exchange for a specific amount of company stock at a later date. It combines a bond and a call option. The bondholder can benefit if there's an increase in the stock's value. The amount of stock that a bondholder can acquire is subject to a predetermined formula. Caroline buys a $500 bond from True Tone Music with a coupon of 5%. 
If the bond has a conversion ratio of 10 to 1, it means she can convert it into 10 shares of True Tone stock. This gives Caroline a conversion price of $50, or $500 divided by 10. Because the company's shares are now trading at $40, Caroline determines that she's better off holding on to the bond and receiving a predictable $25 annual return from her coupon payments. A couple years later, however, she notices that the company's share price has jumped to $60, well above the conversion price. Because the intrinsic value of her bond is now worth $60 times the conversion ratio of 10, which is $600 if converted into equity, she opts for the immediate $100 gain or premium. That's a $600 stock value minus the bond's $500 face value. Given the higher upside potential, convertible bonds are generally more attractive to investors than traditional bonds. This benefit explains why many companies like issuing these instruments. If a firm normally requires a 6% coupon to attract investors, it might be able to get by offering 5% for a convertible bond. Investors should be aware of the trade-offs, however. After all, there's always a chance that if the share price doesn't rise, the conversion feature will be useless. But for those seeking a steady payout now and a chance at bigger returns in the future, these bonds are an interesting option to consider. Cash and short term restricted cash increased. So 1.2 billion versus just under a billion the previous quarter. So they did add to their cash. All right, so here we go. The, the uh, guidance for Q1 2021. Module shipments of 4.5 gigawatts to 5 gigawatts. Revenue of 1.18 billion to 1.3 billion. Gross margin 12 to 15 percent. If we scroll up here, scroll to the top of this page. Total revenues for this quarter were 1.44 billion. Here they're guiding for revenues of 1.18 to 1.3 billion. So even in their best case scenario, they're gonna underperform the previous quarter by 0.15 billion, 14 billion, and the gross margin up here was 16 percent. And they're saying their best case scenario, they're going to underperform by 1%. So they're already letting you know Q1 is going to be weaker. There's, I mean, it might be significantly weaker or it might be drastically weaker, but bottom line is going to be weaker. So from here until June, I expect the stock price to continue to fall. However, going to the next page, they had record full year shipments of 18.8 gigawatt. That's up 31.4% year over year. So that's a significant amount. You can expect on average 10% growth with the company or in the stock exchange or anything like that. But 31.4%, that's pretty significant. That it suggests that the company or the sector is growing very quickly. Record full year revenues. So we're looking at Q4 in a negative light. And we're looking at Q1 in a negative light. But last year, their revenues were up 18.1%. So if you back up and look at the full picture, one quarter might be bad, but the other quarters kind of make up for it, average out. Full year gross profit of just at a billion dollars for 2020, up 13.6% year over year. And a gross margin of 17.6% for 2020. So the gross margin did drop from the previous year, but... Notice how they came in at 16% for the quarter, but they averaged out at 17.6%. So the other quarters were much stronger. Record full year income from operations of $273 million, up 3.2% year over year. So even though they lost money in the previous quarter, they came out a third of a billion dollars. Well, a quarter, in between a quarter and a third of a billion dollars which is interesting because you can look at the market cap of Jinko Solar is $1.75 billion and their revenue just at, wait, record full year revenues of $5.38 billion for 2020. They are selling almost four times what the value of the company is per year. And they are profiting net income of uh, probably a sixth or a seventh of the total value of the company, the market cap. Uh, they're 
they're adding to their bank account. So that suggests that the company is very, very undervalued at the moment. <clears throat> they can pretty much fund a entirely new Jinko Solar company every six or seven years, su suggesting that you know their profits remain the same, their revenue re remains the same. They could pretty much start up an entirely new Jinko Solar company in six or seven years with just their profits. And then another one in three years if both companies were to contribute and then another one every year after that they're making quite a bit of money and the stock price doesn't really reflect that you know you can you can get frightened by them missing the quarter uh losing money this quarter but bottom line is they're making a lot of money overall their debt net debt of 1.5 billion dollars as of the end of 2020 so they added a half a billion of debt since the prior year, full year 2021 shipment guidance of 25 to 30 gigawatts. So keep in mind, they say Q1 guidance, 4.5 to 5 gigawatts and the revenues accordingly. It'll get into telling us, let's see, it'll get into telling us how many gigawatts they shipped in Q4. They're saying 4.5 to 5 gigawatts in Q1. Ah, here we go. Record full year shipments of 18.8 .8 gigawatts. So if we take 18.8, .8, that's four quarters, right? So 18.8 .8 divided by four suggests 4.7 gigawatts in Q4. Just rough math. If you're doing uh, the total that they did divided by the four quarters, on average, they shipped. Um, 4.7 in that quarter and here they're guiding for here they're guiding for 4.5 to 5 gigawatts um, in Q1 suggesting that they're going to be right on par with where they were but they're guiding for 25 to 30 gigawatts in the full year of 2021 so let's take the average of that 27 divided by 4 so they're going to underperform in Q1 best case five, but they need to ship on average 6.75 gigawatts to meet that guidance. So this is, they're expecting things to ramp up pretty steadily after Q1. If Q1 delivers 4.5 and they can still meet their guidance of 25 or 30 gigawatts for the full year, they'll probably ship seven, eight in the subsequent quarters after that. Uh, so it starts to look pretty good for the company beyond Q1. At the end of 2020, Jinko Solar became the world's largest photovoltaic manufacturer with an aggregate model of 70 gigawatts. We expect shipments to sustain a growth rate of over 30%. That's a significant growth rate. Increasing deliveries by 30% in a year. Their new generation Tiger Pro flagship product will account for 40 to 50% of the total shipments this year with cumulative orders of over 10 gigawatts. And this panel it has the highest efficiency of any solar panel produced currently they keep winning awards for breaking the efficiency rating and they can mass produce it very quickly so that's pretty much what they're going to talk about here in this in this powerpoint they'll go into specifics and we can see where they're pulling this information from we can assess their arguments see what we think and when they say that they're the largest company by market cap, they're not. They're actually very undervalued. So the market cap is, would we say, 1.75 billion. For example, Sunrun will have a higher market cap of 10.45 billion. That number is largely due to the price of the stock and how many shares are available. Chico Solar has less shares available. Sunrun, Sunrun is trading for a higher price bumping up the market cap. However, Jinko Solar sells 13% market share. They provide 13% of all solar purchasers with panels. What is Sunrun's uh, market share? I wonder if this is just in the United States, but it says that their market share is 20.02. Is that just residential? They're expecting global installation levels to increase in 2021. Uh, and then steadily throughout. It looks like the company is gearing more and more towards high efficiency monocelled solar panels, mainly the Tiger Pro series. They were selling 26% multi 
face. I want to say it's multi-face panels in 2019. Dropped that all the way down to 2%. So they're starting to consolidate the products that they that they deliver. That'll speed up production capacity. That should drop capital expenditure. Because they're not having to set this machine up for this type of panel. They can just have all these all these different machines running the same panel, same parts. You don't have to train people to run different panels. It's just the same panel. Here we see their mono wafer pretty much doubled production. Uh, they, this is the production capacity. So they double production capacity on the mono wafer year over year. Slight increase in the perk cell and doubled module production capacity year over year. And in 2021, it's like a 50% increase in mono wafer, a doubling, over doubling of perk cell, a slight increase in module production 2021. Here we have their four different type series panels that they are delivering. 50% of those being Tiger Pro series. They took a dip in Q1 2020 revenue and total model shipments. And it looks like that's a trend, maybe due to the season. It looks like that they dip in Q1. Q4 usually being the strongest quarter. Maybe their operating costs increased, which is why they were... They underperformed Q3 2020, even though it looks like here they shipped more modules, had a greater revenue. And here on the right, it looks like that their gross profit and gross margin dropped, even though they had the higher module shipments and, and revenue. Operating profit and operating margin fell over 5%. Well, just at 5%. That tells us that they faced greater costs. They increased their inventories uh, over a hundred million dollars worth cash and restricted cash increased their cash by three hundred million dollars total assets increased by close to a billion dollars total debt increased by 300 million but their net debt dropped by 30 million total liabilities increased six six hundred million dollars total shipments here we go so 18.8 actual gigawatts in 2020. In Q1, they're estimating 4.5 to 5 gigawatts, 25 to 30 gigawatts for the full year. Revenue, all of 2020 was 5.38 billion, and in Q1, 1.18 billion to 1.30 billion is expected at a lower gross margin. That's pretty much the end of the PowerPoint there. So always make sure you look at the the presentation for a company first. It really puts it puts all the information you need to acquire about the company. Easy to digestible PowerPoint. Um, they have tons of notes. They try to make it easily digestible, give you visual aids, and tell you a little bit about the company. We could have went into in depth about the panels here. Down here for the Tiger Pro module suitable for installation in high snow wind load areas so let's say that's something that they learned from the previous panels and are perfecting dealing with weatherization more user-friendly module size and weight designed for rooftop installation so they heard from their installers they heard the complaints these bulky oblong shaped panels they're hard to install so they change the design to make the install process quicker. You're saving labor, money and labor, if you make it easier to install. People will be more likely to want to install them, but be quicker. If you can use less accessories, that'll save money as well. And offers the industry's outstanding 15-year product warranty and 25-year linear warranty. Apply to a wide variety of distributed scenarios, here we go, ultra high efficiency of 21.3% for this panel. And I believe that's going to be a industry, that's the high in the industry. And they have a couple of projects out here they tell you about. So you learn a little bit about the company, you learn a little bit about the finance, about the products that they sell, they give you guidance into the future. Most companies, they get pretty close to their guidance, but it's a toss up whether or not they underperform or overperform, but uh, to start. So look at that. All right, I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or notice anything that I got wrong, any misinformation, please point it out uh, in the comment section below. If you have any companies that you would like me to do research on, also comment those below.
take a look at the description. I have links to everything, uh, all of my sources, all of the platforms that I use to do my research. You can go back behind me, make sure I didn't miss anything, and make sure I didn't provide any wrong information. The truth is always kind of elusive. It really depends on the perspective that you look at things with. I may have come to one conclusion, you may come to another. And your conclusions are definitely welcome here. Alright, more to come.